Okay. Um, can you hear me all? Yes, doctor. Okay. So welcome back to uh, today's session. Um, uh, yesterday we started talking about um, neural network classification with PyTorch. Um, so today we'll try to see if we can finish the session. Um, just a bit of recap, what we discussed last week, um, yesterday, um, we started talking about classification of, of different kind. We have binary, multi-class, and multi-level. Binary is something like this, given two things, uh, multi-class given multiple things, and you know, um, multi-level classification when you have multiple levels attached to single item. That's what we discussed. Um, we also discussed then um, before we see the architecture for neural network uh, for, for classification, we have a lot of ingredients we need to understand. We talk about input layer, hidden layers, neurons, output share, hidden activation, activist loss function. So all these ingredients, that's what we be seeing one by one um, until we have gathered all the ingredients and we put them together to do training. And we talk about these are the input, these are the hidden units, this is the output layer. And in each hidden unit, um, we have, this is neuron, this is neuron. And, you know, at each hidden unit, we have, um, you know, activation function. So this is our activation. Also, we have activation function at the output layer. So that's why here we have hidden layer activation and we have active layer, output layer activation. We also have loss function and automate that we see. So this is something we discuss. We discuss them all here. What are they? For example, ReLU, um, you know, sigmoid and other, other things. We also discuss some of the output activation, which such as, um, if you are doing binary, sigmoid, multi-class, submax, you know, uh, multi-level also, sigmoid, something like that. Um, so this is the, what we were following, um, you know, given input, follow here, make validation, find the loss, update the optimizers, update the way, and keep doing training loop. And each loop we do is what we call, what, what do we call one loop? Um, who can remember? Um, if I find, uh, made a prediction, find the loss, going through a full cycle is called what? Epoch. Exactly. So going through a full cycle is called an epoch. And that's what we've seen. So optimizers also we discuss about, we have different kind of optimizers. We have, for example, um, SGD, ADAM, RMS from ADA grid, a lot of them, but we'll see them. We also discuss about the loss and cost function. Um, if we are doing regression, this loss function, uh, we're going to see. If you are doing regression, you will be doing like MSC, MA. If you are doing classification, binary, all this stuff, we discard them. So these are some of the theory. Um, we said, okay, let's create um, a synthetic data that we'll be using. So we create a data set here. Um, let me, um, um, okay. Right. Um, so let me do this. What this guy is doing? Okay. Why? Uh, kind of. What am I doing? Um. Hmm. Okay. No, I'm not talking about this. I have an environment data science. Why is my environment? Uh. Okay. This is the environment. Okay. Okay. Here we said, okay, let's create um, a dummy data set that will be will use um, for doing um, you know our classification. And um, here we have you know uh, we uh, talk about uh, using this data set called cycle. And we look at it, we can see this is a data set that contain many points. And um, yeah, of here, yes. So here we download the data set. And we can see we have X and Y. This is our X. So we have like two features. This is our Y. We have one feature. And yep, we said from there, we put all everything in the data in like a pandas data frame. So we can see we have this is a data set with two features. And this is our target. So our aim is to um, you know, do um uh, training uh, a PyTorch neural network to do some kind of classification. Um, we can see what are going to do. So this is the data. So we can see like um, it has like all this point when we plot these points um, using like matplotlib here, we can see it give us this. So what we are trying to do is we train a PyTorch um, neural network to be able to classify 
the inner cycle and the outer cycle. So that's what we call, oh, you can see classification binary between this cycle and this cycle. So we are trying to classify two things. That is the M. And um, yes, so uh, now um, we also move from there. We say, let's turn our data into tensors and, you know, and divide the data into trend test split. And we show how we can convert our data into tensors. So here, when we run this guy, um, you know, it means, okay, what am I doing? Student I run this. Um, okay, we have our, uh, let me see this. Okay, yep. We have our X. Okay, we have our X. Oh, I didn't import touch. Import touch, right? Um, uh, we convert our, um, you know, our X's because they are from NumPy. We convert them to touch. Well, that is the next thing. And the next thing is we converted our, we divide our data into train test fleet so that we'll be able to train um, deep learning network, which is this. Um, the next thing we did was basically, you know, um, building a model is to the first one is set up a device agnostic mode. Um, which is this. So this one allow us, if you are, we have a CUDA, which is GPU, um, so our device will be in GPU. But now um, I'm running my computer, it's on CPU. So in the subsequent session, we move on to um, GPU. For example, we can use, you know, um, uh, called Colab. So we can see now when we run um, Xtrend, uh, we can see um, we have um, uh, from here, uh, it's still on devices, um, in device if you haven't put it, but here when we do this, uh, it means we move excellent to device. So when we uh, run this, it's give us device. But what is in GPU, if we have GPU, we see that um, it is in GPU. So we discussed this. Um, uh, now we have set up um, device agnostic that is pushing all our data. Um, we, we know how we can push our data to GPU. Um, the next thing is to, um, you know, have a, a model, subclass model um, that we can use to train. So we already know this is, you know, I uh, will create a class, um, cycle move model version zero. And we know this depth in itself, um, we define a class and we subclass it here with um, NN model, which we already know how to do that. Um, and also we have, you know, um, this is our forward pass, right? So this is a forward pass. Um, we know forward pass is something that we go from one layer to another, but this forward pass here, you can see I'm concatenating them like in some form of one into another one. But some people write this forward pass in some shape. Let's see, let me show you how people, um, okay, let me um, readable, let me make this one more readable. Um, yes, so look at, um, sometimes you will see it in this format. Um, look at it. So here you have X. Um, what do we do? We have first layer. You input your X. Now you call the first layer that you created, step layer one. You input the X, it gives you the output. Now the output, you now have it in the second layer. You say step layer, step the layer two. You have another output. Now you turn it X. But um, so this one is more readable, and this is what you will see mostly um, outside. But what we are doing here is just we put everything together. Can you see that the output here? We don't need to create any variable x that we are storing um, everything um, as I showed here. Um, uh, as here, you can see layer one of the network. We have here layer two, the output is now here. So we don't create everything. Um, so just take note, you'll be seeing this implementation um, uh, outside. All right, so we discussed about this. So when we run this guy, um, we, we know how to create a model. So um, from our class, you know, cycle like this, we push it to device um, if we have GPU. And now this is our parameter. So you can see this is, um, we have how many input features two? We have output features five, out input. So uh, why do we have input features two? Because our data set has two input feature, X1, X2. And uh, this um, output features is something, you know, uh, hyper parameter. Um, but whatsoever you have this output feature must be the number that you have an input features. And we want to have output feature is one because our target Y is one. Um, our target one is only one output. We want to uh, only one one output. That is what we have. So this is how we prepare our, you know, um, 
uh, model. Any question before we move on? But we also discussed saying that yesterday, um, sometimes it's not necessary to use these um, uh, subclasses. So you can use NM sequential. So you can see NM sequential. You just need to call NM just sequential. And then linear, you put it, and then linear output, and you know you pass the model to device. Finally, you can see here what we did. We need to create a class, and now we uh, create an object and pass it to device. But here we just use this and then model, and then sequential, and finally we set dot to device. Now when we call the model zero, now we have the something as this guy, you know, this guy, and we have the something. So it's different implementation that uh, we discussed yesterday. Uh, anyone one can use. And depending on some time use case, which is which, which is better, and uh, yeah, so we talk about uh, showing an example. You can see this is a hidden layer, and we have neurons one, two, three. Um, we show that this is the sample of our data set. This is kind of classification we want to do. This is the inner data. This is the output layer. Um, where we show this kind of example, but we also say that uh, the NN sequential has some another kind of variant. So you can see here. We have NN sequential, which we show, but we have what we call order date, where you can give something like this. You say company, you know, you, you give it in this way. They are also the same. We discussed this. I'm just re uh, repeating them, uh, you know. Uh, okay, so yeah, we also say that um, um, when after we build a model, which is model zero, we can see the model parameters, which is state date, and we can see we have weight and we have bias, we have weight, um, we have bias, or we said, okay. How do we get this weight, 10 weight? Because we can see one, two, three, four, five. That is five times two, 10. Because we can see here our layer, we have input feature, one, two, input feature, 10, five, which is 10. That's why here in this, because we have zero, we have, you can see weight zero, which is at layer zero. And also zero bias means bias at zero, layer zero. We have five because our output feature is five. And also the second one here, you can see one weight is we have Y5 because here five times one. So that's why we have five weight and we have one bias because we have one output. So that's what we have. Um, so this weight or these um, you know, parameters, they are automatically created by PyTorch. And we already know that when we are training a deep learning neural network, we instantiate it with random weight. So this PyTorch is stating us with random weight. So we, um, our aim or goal in training deep learning and uh, deep neural network is to train deep neural network by changing this weight um, in some way so that uh, our model can learn better. So yeah, so that's the idea. Um, so here we say, let, me, let us make prediction, which is called inference on our model, because our model now has some parameters, our model zero, which are random parameters. So here, that's why we say, let me make prediction. So for us to make prediction, we already know we said touch the inference mode. Inference mode means prediction mode. Um, we already know like in uh, here, you can see in deep learning, people say uh, prediction as inference. And so here, this means we want to make prediction. So we send our X test device. So here we can see model zero X test, and this is on, on trend prediction. So here you can see because we haven't trained anything, that's why here we said on trend prediction. So we can see, um, yes, of course, um, um, our prediction, uh, our lens of prediction is 20, um, lens of test, uh, test or our original test is 200, and um, our test is also 200. So we can see, let's see the so we can see this is the prediction, the first 10 prediction, we can see it's something value minus 0 0.8, but the original value, original levels are 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. So, um, but the prediction is somehow negative number and 0, 0, 0. Um, so what is happening? Who can tell us um, what is happening here? We aim, to have, we aim to have our prediction to be like something 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, but our prediction here is giving us some numbers um, um, you know, continuous value. Uh, anybody has an idea what is happening? Okay, so let's move on. So what's happening here is, you know, we can see the prediction we have is not in the same format with the, our, you know, uh, our levels, right? The, the prediction is not in the same format with our level. So what is happening? So what is really happening is that um, um, this, what we have is called logic. It's what we call logic. So when you make a prediction from your model, first, when you make a prediction from your model, what it gives you, it gives you some numbers. These numbers 
they are called logic. They don't resemble your label that you are trying to predict. You need to convert this logic to some format that resembles it. So let me show you something. So for example, here, this is an image. You convert this image to you know, some numbers and you impute it into neural network. Now the output of neural network will give you what is called logic. So you can see this is the output of neural network that we train, right? When you do training the layer, it gives you logic. But for you to combat this logic to form that we will be able to do recognition to do classification, we need to apply a layer which is called softmal layer. That is what we call, you know, we, we discussed about um, hidden layer activation function. This hidden layer activation function, you convert this logic to some form. They will convert it into probability. So softmax here combat logic into probability. So you can see here, um, it combines this number to this probability, this number to this probability, this number to this probability, and this one to this probability. So now we can see here, uh, with, what is the highest probability? 0 0.7, so we have a dog. So this is a dog. So in essence, what I'm trying to tell you is that logic, uh, the prediction of our deep learning, we cannot use it directly. We need to take that prediction to convert it in some format. That is the essence of using what we call hidden activation layers um you know in some way we have um output activation layer as well um i don't know if i'm making sense um so uh, what's logic uh, yes this softmax is it working on the hidden layer or the output layer sorry no sorry um, act, um output layer sorry yeah. So, sorry, yeah. So what, what this is, I said um, hidden activation layer, output layer. So um, because this is our logic, um, you can see this is our output, right? Um, our prediction, which is our output, right? So we cannot understand this output. Um, you know, this output is not something good because you can see it's something zero point, but we want our value to be one and zero. One thing I said here, we said here, let us take this output around it. We, we, are, we know what is rounded, right? In mathematics, we round it. So we call this function toss that round on this prediction, but it turns out it gives us minus zero, zero, zero. It's not even near to one, zero, one, zero. It gives us this. So we can now round it. The only solution is we need to call one function, which are called activation function, output activation function. So this is the you know um, function of output activation. So here we apply softmax, and now it gives us probability. Um, so what is logic? So logic are the output of neural network before the activation function is applied. They represent the raw output of the network and can be used to calculate the probability of each class. Logic are used in store by learning tasks such as classification and can be sort of major of convenience of each class. So you can see here, they give us a major of convenience of each class. So I believe by now we understand what is the, um, you know, uh, what, why do we need to use output activation function? Um, any question? Any question? Um, let me share something. Um, outline, yeah, we have. Mm. Remember when we started here, we talked about this activation function, output activation. We said we have sigmoid, we have also softmax and something like that. So you can see this output, they are the figure I showed. We have softmax because it's multi-class. Um, we use softmax. If we are using binary um, classification, we can use sigmoid. Um, right, um, where we have here. Um, yeah. Yes, because here you can see we have multiple class, dog, card here. That is why we use softmax, right? If we are using binary, um, for example, we can use um, sigmoid. Um, yeah. So this means that um, um, you know uh, when we are trying to train a deep linear network, we take our output, um, the final prediction, and apply softmax. Now, right. So now it means we now um, we um, understand you know taking your input, um, we understand the layers, um, the prediction. Now we need to take this prediction. Just take this point. Your prediction, your raw prediction, cannot be subtracted with true prediction. We need to apply 
activation function, output activation on your operation to turn it so that it will be in similar format with target to target. That is why we apply the um, activation, um, you know, sigmoid and um, softmax. So now, finally, now, since we have our output prediction is the same as this, now we need to use loss function. Now, the next thing we need to see is how can we use loss function and optimize that? So what remains for us now to start training deep, uh, deep neural network um, to prepare our loss function and optimize that? So, so which fun loss function and optimizers do we use? So there are different kinds of loss function and optimizers. So you can see like um, um, here we have um, loss uh, optimizer um, scopetic gradient descent. They are used for classification regulation. We have optimizer, which is also um, optimized. Um, Adam, which is also optimizer, used for classification. This is Poch.optim. They are from this class, Optum, Adam. Um, so by, what about um, by, uh, uh, loss functions? So we have different kind of loss function. Binary cross entropy. We have cross entropy. So this is used for binary classification. Um, cross entropy loss is used multi-class classification. So the loss function that we're going to use here, that is what we are saying. The loss function we are going to use here in PyTorch, we're going to use this binary cross entropy if we are using binary classification. We're going to use cross entropy if we are using cross um, multi class classification. So now we understand what are we going to use. But, what, um, but if you are using, for example, uh, regression, then you can use um, MAE, L1 loss, or L2 loss. Um, and again, what kind of optimizer are we going to use to update this way? That is what we are saying. We are going to use SGD. Or Adam optimizer. So you can see now SGD or Adam optimizer loss. We can use binary cross entropy or um, you know cross entropy loss. So they all these you know loss function and optimizers depend on the problem. So we can see if we now have this and we have this, we now finish everything. What we need to do is to um, prepare our training loop. So let's go and see how we can prepare these guys. So um, let's talk about the first one, which is loss function. So loss function um, in binary classification, we said we have these two. Uh, we have two kind of loss function. Um, we have BEE loss, and we have what is called touch that NNBE BCE with loss logic. So there are two different kind of uh, binary, uh, loss function that you can choose with um, binary classification. But let let me show us what the difference is. Um, let me assume here I have an input. You can see I create an input and I have a target, right? Now this is my input. This is my target, right? Now, this one, the first one, BCE loss, binary cross entropy loss, binary cross entropy loss. Let's see how it can, we can use it. Remember, when we use our prediction logic, we need to apply sort max to give us probability, right? So here, um, I want to use um, something uh, that. So here, I um, create. Um, you know, a sigmoid. Um, I create uh, a sigmoid, and um, as my uh, as my output activation function, I create it here. And now here you can see the input I have. So let's assume the input I have. This is the input. Uh, this is the input. This input. Um, this input of your neural network. I'm putting it here. Yeah, so you can see here, I, I create an object from sigmoid, which is this activation function. Now, I need to apply this sigmoid to input to give me probabilities, right? I need to apply this sigmoid to input to give me probabilities, something like this here. I need to apply sigmoid. So there I'm using sigmoid, not soft math, just to give an example. I need to apply activation function on this, pro, this input, which are logic to give me probabilities. So this is what I'm doing. I'm applying this input to give me probabilities. Now, if I wanna create, create a loss, now, since I have, um, you know, the output, which gives me probability, um, give me the class, I can subtract with this, this loss function. So here I have a loss function. Um, so you can see I cre create a loss function, BMB is loss. Now the loss function will give me the probability and the target. So what I mean here is the probabilities I have here and the true target. I need to calculate these um, differences. So this is, you can see this is this loss function. So the output will give me the uh, loss function. That's how the um, um, BCE -E -B -E loss work. But the other one, which you call BCE with logistic, you don't need to 
create a sigmoid. What, what is it? So this is the same as, okay, create a loss function that measure the binary cross entropy between target and input, BCE loss. But this one has a sigmoid layer attached. So um, this is so confusing, but just be um, patient. We see, uh, you will see the point I'm trying to make. Um, so this one, the loss function, PC with cross entropy, you can see I declare it. It takes the input automatically and the target. So this one has a sigmoid attached with it, built in it. You can see here, I need to pass the input into sigmoid first. Can you see, I need to pass my input to sigmoid first. Now, then I pass the probabilities into the out into the um, lo my loss function, but this one BCE with cross with logistic, it has the sigmoid inbuilt. You just need to call the BCE with the input and output. So the second one, um, if you want to find the loss function, the first okay, let me um, can you see this one BCE with logistic the loss function? Whatsoever it gives you at the prediction, you don't need to apply output activation function. All you need is take the output here, the target, and apply the loss function. So this one has inbuilt the output activation function. But this one, this uh, loss function, it needs you to apply the output um, activation function on the prediction before you do the uh, stop. I don't know if I'm making sense. Um, do you understand what I mean? Doctor, got you. Um, please ask question if you don't understand. Uh, I think it's a little bit confusing. Um, ask question. So what I'm trying to say is that the loss function for binary classification is of two types. You can use any one. We have what we call BCE loss. We have what we call BCE with logistic. BCE loss needs you to first, as I told you, when you have a prediction. You cannot directly compare it with true target because it's something that you cannot do. It's called logic. You need to apply what we call, um, you know, output activation function to change this logic into output probability. Now, this guy, the first loss function, if you want to use it here, you need to use this activation function first on the, the output of here. And now you compare the true target and the output of the activation function to find the loss function. But this is still, you know, uh, why can't we automate this automatically? That can we have a loss function that will directly take the output of prediction without applying the uh, out, um, activation function and this one and calculate the loss function? That is what this guy is doing, which is even better. So this is what we are saying. So when we are talking about binary, let's use binary cross entropy loss function, something like that. So not that this one is, um, uh, it can be confusing at all, but with many, with many things, it becomes easier. So, um, yeah, okay. They even mentioned that it is confusing, but uh, yeah, but I, I, I'm, I'm sure you get the point. Um, you can use anyone, but this one is even better, the loss function. So you can see now we understand which kind of loss function we're gonna use. We're gonna use this loss function, BCE with logistic, and it takes directly the output of this one and just this one and compare them to find the differences. Yes. Any question? Uh, is that is it understood, Kwa? Um, that I didn't. Yeah, doctor. Does that make sense? Yeah, yes. Yeah. OK, yes. OK. So which one should we use? Um, uh, we can see BCE with logistic. I said that it's more numerically stable than using BEC does after an NCD mobile. So generally, implementation two is beta. However, for advanced users, some people may prefer this. So now we understand this. So let's move now to how can we um, you know, have automata. So now, how can we, um, you know, define our loss function? So we can see here. Yes, go on. Question ask. Yes, I can hear you. Let's see. Is there any advantage, um, of using one against the another? Oh yeah. So yeah. So this one they said um, touch nn dot bece with logistic said that it's more numerically stable than using this one. Um, there are a lot of discussion here in PyTorch website. Um, you know, uh, why this loss um, with this is better. So let's look at it. So this, uh, some of the discussion they highlighted here. 
So you can see what is the advantage of using binary cross interactive with logistic ACA, a BCE with logistic sigmoid? You can see BCE with sigmoid. It means it has a sigmoid attached with it over the regular binary in cross entropy. I have multi uh, binary classification problems. So what is the advantage? So these are the so all the as we described, the only difference is included sigmoid activation with this. So you can see this one has a sigmoid activation with it, and comparable with this, uh, where the former uses it. this one activation, why something like that. But uh, um, yeah, so, but also someone, I think, uh, yeah, I think I read this one. Uh, uh, yeah, you can see use this, it's double using this, why something like that. So if you click here, um, you can see some information. This Chinese guy, um, you know, you were saying this is some of the experiment they have. So in general, um, the previous one is more stable, it's even better to use. So that's the point. Does that make sense, Shamsuddin? Yes, doctor, it's okay. Okay, so how can we implement this um, loss function? So this is how we implement it. Um, you can see we can call BNN because we this BCA with mm -hmm. logistic is from touch that NN module. Um, why do, are we saying this NN? Because if you go to here, touch, touch dot NN, we can see they are all here, touch dot NN. You can see loss functions. So they are under touch dot NN. You can see loss functions. Where are they? Loss functions. So that's why you can see N1 loss whatsoever. So when you want to use them, you must call them with NN because you can see them NN, NN. So that's why we have touch um, NN dot bc with logistic we create a loss function so this is our loss function and now our optimizer um, we can see we're going to use um sgd so touch optim sgd and parameter params you remember we need to um, pass parameters so uh, more than zero params and this are learning rate 0 0.1 and now optimizer so we now define our learning rate we now um, optimizer and loss one so now we are ready we define our loss function we define our optimizer so we are ready to train deep neural network but still, uh, now we want to define what is called evaluation metrics, um, which is accuracy. Uh, sometimes you want to, even though we, we want to be able to see how our model loss function is far from the truth, we want to also have accuracy. We already know what is accuracy. Um, so here we are implement also accuracy so that we can see our model accuracy along the way. So here we define a function called accuracy given a true value and prediction. So here we have touched the total through y dot sum that item and now we divide by this so this returns the accuracy so here below i just give us an example on how one can play the accuracy what we did here so you can see here i have a a tensor called true with one two three we have a prediction one two three let's assume we have this tensor one two three and we did a prediction here it gives us this and now what this f eq means are they equal yes we can see here they are all equal right now when i call sum dot sum on it because this is true this is true this is true when i call the sum here it will give me three right because one true is one true is one one plus one plus one you can see is three that is why it gave me this so now when i have true but this return a tensor it's not a normal number i remember i'm trying to calculate an accuracy which is a number that is why here i call an item on it so you can see when we call an item um it remove the tensor and give us three remember an item is a function that gives you a literal number so you can see like now i have a three now if we want to calculate the accuracy um is just we find where the true value is the same as prediction and we sum all that places and we divide by by the true value um we divide by by the um length of the prediction right y pred so that's why um, you can see here we can divide by the lens of parade, um, which you can see this lens of parade. You can see it give me one percent. Um, okay, we can also say like this. Um, we want to convert it to percentage. We can say times hundred. Yeah, you can see it's one uh, hundred percent. So that's what we did here. You can see it times hundred. So this is just we create an accuracy function that uh, will calculate the accuracy. Uh, you can see here if the number is maybe uh, the prediction is four, it's not three. When we run this guy, um, you can see um, when we try to calculate this, you can see it gave me six, six percent accuracy because you know. So that's um, you know one function we created. 
Right, so then the next thing is basically we train a model. Um, we already know how to train a model. Okay, any question before we move on? Any question? Okay, so we already know how to build a uh, train a model. We have a different kind of steps, forward pass, calculate the loss, optimize the grade, loss backward, optimize the steps, right? Um, so here I already explained it, going from raw model output to prediction to logic probability, prediction probability and prediction level. So let me, let us see this. Um, I've already told us like when we run, um, uh, we do inference, it gives us something which is called um, logic, which is not um, a class, but this logic, we need to turn it into the same format, our class, right? Um, our target. Um, so why logic is this? But we see the example of Y test, our original level is one zero zero. How can we turn now this into this format so that we can be able to classify? So one thing we can do, we know that we need to apply sigmoid on this logic. So here we can see we apply sigmoid. So we can see the output now here, we have minus this zero. Now it turns them into 0 0.5, 0 0.4, something like this. Um, you can see the sigmoid layer now uh, turns them into some stuff like this, right? Um, that's what I want to show us here. Um, well, here you can see apply sigma, it gives you some stuff like this. So here, we applied the yeah, sigmoid, but remember here, what we are doing here is um, binary classification. Now, what we want to do is, um, we want to say that whatsoever that is greater than 0 0.5 is in one class. What's saver that is in less than 0 0.5 is in the different class. So because we have two classes. So you remember if you have two classes, um, this is some kind of predictive um, stuff. Uh, we want to put anything. So here we said anything that is greater than zero is in one class one, anything that is. So we, how can we round this? Um, we can call round function. So you can see the output here. You can see the output here that we have this, uh, the output of sigmoid, we call a round function. You can see tot the round, this output, you can see I call tot the round. Now it give me one zero 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 one because I have binary class. Um, so all in all, all these steps, you can put it in one single round. You can see the first one, I the, my model, the output of the model, I call sigmoid on it. Can you see that? Because if you look at this, the output of model, model here, the first five, no, no, no. The first five, let me show us the output here. The first five, we can see the output of the model. You can see that this is logic. I remember I said logic, we cannot use logic. How can you combat this logic? We call um what? A sigmoid on it. Can you see that? We can call it a sigmoid on this logic. And so we have a sigmoid on it. So we can see we have a sigmoid changes into something that um, you know understand, but still, because we are doing binary classification, we want a situation whereby any number that is greater than 0 0.5 is one class anyway. Then that is why we say, okay, let's call again. Um, let's round it. So we call touch the round. This may not be the same if we are using maybe uh, multi-class classification. So, but for binary classification, um, this is, so we can see we call this one. So that's, you know, um, what we have here. So you can see we are gonna use it. So this is basically what we'll be seeing um, to prediction. Okay, so as I said, this is not true if you are using uh, multi-class classification, we will see. Um, so here you can see we use touch the round with binary classification because we have two classes. But if we come with a uh, multi-class classification, remember the argmax function that if you have multiple class, it will select one that is highest. So if you have three or four, we cannot round because rounding will round into two classes into um, you know, um, greater than 0 0.5 or something like that. But we'll come to this. Um, I've just introduced you to it, but don't, um, don't bother about this. We'll come to that um, in the next session about uh, multi-class. Okay, so we are done with everything. Um, building our class, um, we call manual. See, we create a state. I always told you that we want to send everything to CUDA. So we create a manual state on CUDA. CUDA manual state, we have this. Um, then this, um, this, Manual seed is on our CPU. This manual seed is in our GPU. So we create an epoch of 100. So you can see Y, X, then Y, then X, then is this. We send it to CGP, D, uh, device. Y, then is this. We send it to GPU. If you have GPU, 
Right. So here we put everything to the device. Now we want to do um, epoch. Um, the first thing is training model that train. Right. Um, logic uh, models. Um, prediction. We did a prediction. Remember how do we did the prediction? We said we need to call touch the segment your output. So you can see this is our logic. Um, when we want to do forward path, remember this our the steps we're gonna follow. Uh, where are they? Um, forward path. The first one is forward path. Um, how do you do forward path? Um, we call our model. So which is this? Um, uh, model zero. We put the trend data on, on space to remove uh, one and give us logic. Remember, in previous session, we only have this step, right? So this logic cannot be used, right? Um, because we are using, so we need to convert it into some stuff, right? So that's why we call turn the sigmoid and turn the run in our turn logic into prediction, into prediction level. So this um this is some, you know, turn logic because this output is a logic. We turn it into probability using turn the sigmoid. And now this, we turn it either around to um, prediction level. So we have this. Now, the next one, what is the next step after the, this step? Uh, calculate the loss. So how can we calculate the loss? Um, we already have defined our loss function, if you remember. Um, you need to give the loss function the logit and the y trend. So we define our loss function already. Uh, where do we define our loss function? Uh, here, loss function. Yes, this is our loss function. Can we see that? Uh, loss function is this BC with logit. And what is the input of this? Um, uh, the input of what you need to give input to this loss function? What do we need to give input to this loss function? Um, you can see here, um, input, you need to give it um, to the target, right? Uh, that's what you're gonna do. This is what's so about, why, why, why? Okay. Um, right, so we can see we already defined our loss function. So um, you input the, um, you know, uh, the y logic. So you can see this one. For the loss function, here we are not putting the prediction. If you want to calculate the, remember, if we use the, um, this one here, yeah. So you remember our loss function is using, does, does not require, um, you know, sigmoid or anything um this one is prediction don't be confused with our here you can see we still call sigmoid around this give us prediction but this one is our output the logic so we if we want to find we will use this one somewhere else but here if you want to find our loss function we give it the logic and the trend so as as we already as i already show us here the output here in logic format and the trend, true target we give it to the loss function binary cross interview with logistic. So that's what we are doing here. You can see it um, here. And now our accuracy. Now remember here, we already talked about accuracy. We define our accuracy function here. Uh, where is the accuracy function? Yes, this accuracy. An accuracy function take what? Um, y true and prediction, right? The prediction. So that's why here, we try to find prediction here in this sense. That is why here we still use the sigmoid and uh, around it here. So you can see here, uh, we use a sigmoid and call touch on round to find the prediction. That is why, because we want to use it here. So that's why we have here. And the next thing is we, we need to call um, uh, optimizer. We need to zero grad. Uh, the next step, uh, zero grad, optimizer zero grad. That is third step. We call optimal at zero grad, and the next one is loss backward. We gonna back propagate, which is the next step. Um, loss backward, which is back propagation, and optimize that step. So that's what we have here. Loss backward, optimize that step. So we can see here now we do that, and now then model testing. Uh, we have to call eval because we are in testing phase, and uh, we want to do inference, right? So if we want to do inference. Um, we want to call model here, uh, model zero um, test. We speed, we have the test logic because it gives us logic and we want to get the test prediction. We call this to give us the prediction on this. 
But when we want to calculate the loss, remember the loss function, we have to take the logic or to my, uh, direct and y test and detect accuracy we have to it will take the prediction and the true. And now here we have um, our model, we can see what it means. So after training this one, after running this one, we can see um, our accuracy is not good, like 49% and the loss is 0 0.693. So this model is not doing a great job. Um, if you have loss, so, okay, we all know this is just a Python. So here, because you can see I have, um, you know, my f of is 100. So the first thing one, the first round, because this is a loop four, it will sell 100 um, modulo 10. 100 modulo 10 is equal to zero. So that's why here I have zero, um, right? Um, the second one, it will go um, into the next iteration, um, you know, and uh, it will, um, you know, uh, keep changing. That's why we have the second one, 100 and something like that. And here we have the loss. You can see this is the loss, um, loss we have, which is this and the accuracy. Um, we have the accuracy that we calculated here. Uh, which accuracy they have here? Accuracy. This accuracy, can we see that? Training accuracy. So you can see what you also need to know is that we have here loss, training loss. We have accuracy in the loss, um, in training. So here you can see for training, we have the loss for training. We have the accuracy for training. So this part is for training. That is what we put here. Can you see this is for training? And now this one is for test. Test loss, we are putting this one where we for the test. You can see this one. And now here is test accuracy. So we want to observe what is the accuracy during training? What is the loss during training? What is the accuracy during testing? What is the accuracy during? So when we can see that the loss during training is 0 0.69, and the loss during training is 0.50%. Um, in fact, the model is not doing good, right? Um, so, yeah. So any question before we move on? Any question? Okay. So in that case, um, we said um, we can see that our model, let's make a prediction and evaluate the model. Um, um, and we can see here that um, uh, we import some kind of, um, you know, uh, code from, remember in our previous session, we used um, one code, um, you know, a, a helper function. So let me show all this code that they downloaded. This helper function. So there is helper function here from the website, um, which will be, will be able to use. And we have a lot of, uh, functions here, so they create uh, a file with some a lot of function. We can see when we say helper functions, um, we can see that helper function uh, they are something that we can use through our stuff. So you can see here we have um, a function uh, import files whatsoever works through directly. There's something float decision boundary. So this is a function that float decision boundary. Um, they have another function here uh, float predictions. They have another for uh, accuracy function accuracy. They have fun another function what. So you, you know, if you are doing Python, you create a functions and store them sub, somewhere else. So we don't need to put them here. So here they import the function by using import request uh, because it's a GitHub, um, you know, if the path it exists, if the file exists, don't do anything. But if it doesn't exist, request and open it. And now here we can see it download the file. So the file is now in our computer. And now when we come here, we can see the helper function here somewhere here. Uh, yeah, you can see it helper. Can we see the function that we downloaded? We just saw there. So this is just a helper function that allow us to do. Um, we want to uh, um, evaluate our data that we can. So now what we want to do is that we want to use the this fun one function in the helper function for flood decision. Uh, where the function flood decision boundary? This function flood decision boundary. So what the function is doing is just trying to flood. Um, you know your x and y test to see. Hmm. Yeah, you can see here, um, we saw that our 
think our model is not trying to create um to classify this data. We can see our model what is doing is creating a straight line, right? On trend data, you can see a straight line because it's trying to divide this data into two points. So it's not um you can see our data is not like um um it's not linear data, but it, our model is trying to divide the data in some linear fashion. So we change um, one hyperparameter. What we need to do now is to go back and see how can we update our model so that it's actually not doing this stuff, it's, um, update, um, it's doing some kind of linearity. So what we are missing here is basically, we are missing some kind of um, uh, 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 non-linearity functions. Uh, this means that our model is basically assumed that the data is linear and we need to tell the model our data is not linear, our model is non-linear. That is where the um, hidden activation function comes from. It changes your model from linear function, linear, linear to uh, non-linear. Um, let me show something, um, hidden activation function, hidden activation function, non-linear. So you see, yeah, so what I'm trying to tell, uh, tell you is that whenever we have our input, it comes here, we do some, we need to have hidden activation function. Until now, we have not introduced any hidden activation function. So this hidden activation function, you can see them, hidden activation function, they are what? turns our deep learning more sophisticated to learn very sophisticated, complex structure. Without these hidden activation functions, you cannot learn anything complex in deep learning. These hidden activation functions, they are what, in, what introduce, make deep learning to learn complex structure. Remember we introduced them here, um, you know, this one. Hidden, already I showed you output activation function, right? Where it turns the logic into probabilities, but I haven't shown you this hidden layer. So this hidden layer, they are what returns anything linear to, you know, you can see them here, but we have not shown them. So this is what we see next. How can we introduce hidden activation functions so that it will make our model not learn correctly? Um, any question before we move on, any question? Okay, so how can we now improve our model? So there are many ways, if you train your deep learning model, it's not doing a good, there are many ways to improve it. One way is through a model perspective, that is you adjust some model parameters. The other way is from data perspective, that is you need to get more data, make data if your model. So if our model is not fitting the data, then in some ways um, you are underfitting. Then you need to create more data, improve more data. That is from data perspective, but you can improve your model through model perspective by trying to change some, you know, uh, start changing some stuff. So let's look at what we do. So that's um, what we have, where we are for, you remember, we evaluate the model, but finally you improve through implementation. You improve your model by changing this, change this, update this, plug this, update this, until your model has a good performance. So that's what we're gonna see next. So you can see there are more things we can do to update, uh, improve our model performance. You can, you know, do add more layers. So what does that mean? So because we are using only two layers, we can add more layers because more layers make the model more complex. You can add more hidden units, more hidden units. You can fit for longer because we are fitting for only 100, 1000, I think, 100, 100, we can fit for 1000. We can also change the activation function. We can change the learning rate. We can also change the loss function. You can use the, so there are many ways you can actually uh, from model but all these issues are from model perspective that you can find tune your model change some talk to make it better um yes so one thing we have not shown is how can we use um linear uh, activation function in the hidden unit so you can see here um what we are doing previously we just have these two features and then the linear another and then linear so what we're supposed to have to make our model more rigorous more cumbersome is a after any linear we need to input uh, include Hidden activation unit. Can you see NN ReLU? Linear layer, NN ReLU, linear layer, NN ReLU, linear layer, NN ReLU. That's what will um, make your model more complex. Remember here, after each summation, hidden, uh, hidden layer, we pass, we need to have uh, 
hidden activation function after each one hidden activation function so but when we create our model here we only have nn the linear yeah um, we only have sequential yes we only have sequential here um here is an example that i show which we didn't do where is our model yes this one can you see we only have linear we only have linear can we see linear now linear so in between linear one layer one and layer two we're supposed to have what you call um you know um Lin non linear activation function, non linear activation function. We're supposed to have non linear activation functions. So that's what we're going to do. Any question before we continue? <laughs> All right. So you can see what I'm saying. We need to add some stuff you know, like this. Um, so there are many ways we can improve our model. You can change the learning rate. If your learning rate is somehow 0 0.1 or 0 0.2, you can change it through a random model. When you change it to some particular number and see whether the learning rate is good, you can change the number of epoch to see your epoch is somehow better. You can even change the optimizer. Now, if we are using SGD, we can change it to Adam. Now we are using 0 0.01 learning rate, we can change it to this. When we are using epoch 10, we can change it to 100. Can you see that? Um, but another thing, one of the main important here is this introducing what we call a um, non-linear activation. So our model may be learning, but we can see the model is trying to do some linear classification. It's not doing um, very uh, stuff. So you can see you can do a lot of stuff. So um, let's go on and do one thing at a time. Um, remember, when you are doing deep learning, when you want to improve your model, you do one thing at a time. So we cannot do all these things at a time because we will not know which one improve our model. So the first thing we can do is, okay, let's add one more layer. Can you see that? Now you can see we have one feature because previously we have five, now it becomes 10. Um, you can see I, had, I add another layers, one, two, three layers, but also the layers and the neurons from five now 10, you can see that. So you can see we have extra layer now, right? And uh, yes, um, you can see here we have our stuff. Also here, um, I made mention this one, we are concatenating them, but we can have this format. Um, we can have this one. So this is sometime where, what you'll be able to see in some people's code. You will see that this, the first layer we have, we call it, um, we said save the layer one, we pass the input, which is X, we save the result in Z, right? Now, the result here of the second layer is five to second. So here Z, step the layer two, we pass Z, we step the result in another variable Z. You can see this variable is overriding the previous one. Remember Z, Z here is not the same as Z here, Z here, Z, right? The next one here, the output here, now we have Z layer three, we input Z and have Z, and we return Z here. But we here we, you can see where we are putting them in a single cell. So in, in many deep learning um, PyTorch work, you will see this implementation in your forward pass. Um, so don't get confused when you see that. So you can see here, we now create another, oh no, what's happening? You comment including the method. Ah, okay, sorry. Yes. Uh, it's right and stuff. Right, you can see we have three layers, we can see here, right? Now we can now create our, since we have new model, we create our new model version one. The previous one is version zero. Now we have um, SGD, our optimizers, learning rate in 0 0.1. Now we change our learning rate previously is, uh, you can see 0 0.01. We change it now to somewhere 0 0.01. And you know, we calculate this. And now let us run with um, 1000 epoch. Can you see that? With, oh, this is what we already explained. And um, when we run this guy, Oh no, our model is still not improving. We can see like our model, we still have fit one and you know, our model is not doing a good job. Let's run this guy to see the, you know, you still the model is doing, trying to get a linear. So as I said, what we need to do, you know, is just to introduce what you call learn linear activation function. So learn linear activation function will allow us to see that, uh, um, you know, our model um, will learn better. But still, our model is not that it's not learning model. Our model is learning, but the data is, you know, not linear. So here they um, introduce um, our, our previous example we had um, for regression, where we create um, uh, regression, you know, uh, uh, data. So here they create the data with weight and bias and whatsoever. 
And now here you have a point, the class, um, uh, uh, we create a trend test split and uh, we wanna, so we plot the data. This is our data. You remember this data we did last. Now we want to use this model we already have to see that if it can fit the data because the model we learned that is trying to fit linear data. So we want to see if the model can fit this linear data. So this is the essence here. So we can see here um, our model here. We fit it here. Um, we have this. We run the model through the same data. And now we, we plot the data, plot the model. So you can see the model is fitting a state line. You can see like it's trying to fit this data. Well, when we extend some if stop, the prediction will be close to this. So this tells us that our, our model is learning, but it's learning linearly. It's not learning complex stuff. So now the missing part is what we call non-linearity. We need to include non-linearity in our data so that um, our data will, uh, our model will be able to learn that kind of concept on non-linearity. Um, so what does that mean in the non-linearity? Um, let me run this. This is our data. We just we just recreate the data. So let's move on. So we know we already know like if we have you know um, our building non um, building the model with non-linearity, um, we can see that if we have an input layer, we have a hidden layer, we have output layer. But in this hidden unit, in hidden layer, we have not this non-linearity. So when you sum everything, you introduce non-linearity. Uh, we already see the activation function here at the output layer, which is sigmoid we saw last time or also, but we didn't see this one. So let's introduce one. So how can you do that? So here we can see we have a class, our class um, here. We define the first layer, second layer, third layer, and you know nonlinear activation function. We define this one. So we can see we have everything here, right? So now how can we do this? Um, remember I told you um, for you to do a forward pass, how can you do? The first layer, you need to come to the first layer. Uh, except that layer one, we need to part X. But after the first layer, um, you see, after we sum everything, then we need to have activation function. So that's why here I have ReLU. Can you see the output? I put ReLU, except the ReLU. Can you see that? Um, uh, because I already have a declare a ReLU. Can you see that? Except the ReLU. And you know that um, ReLU is non activation, linear activation function, right? So you can see I have no ReLU. So the output here, I have layer two. So after each layer, I have uh, my non-activation function. Can you see that after each layer, I return this. And still you can remember here, we are concatenating the same thing. So this is still the same thing, but uh, I think this one is even more readable, right? Uh, uh, yeah, if I, this one, because I, I just click here, if I want this one more readable, um, I have something here that would click, um, make it more readable if I click here. Yeah, you can see um, it makes it more readable. Even add layer one, layer two, layer three, you can see that. So you can see that in each layer, you have your linear layer and you have ReLU. In layer two, you have your linear layer, you have ReLU. In your linear three, you can see that I return finally this. So this is basically, um, you know, um, what the missing point we have, um, we don't have linear. So now we have this, um, um, yep. Yeah. And you remember here, um, here we just initialize everything here um when you want to assess any linear here layer here uh you need to in inside any function you need to reference it with this keyword step the linear one step the linear one i think um uh if somebody is confused with why we are using step i think maybe um if people are interested we can hold a session 102 on classes um we can discuss a lot about classes because going forward um, this will have, we will be doing a lot of stuff in classes, like, um, you know, how we can do inheritance stuff, um, this vital class, Danda method, and, you know, um, and, and a lot of, a lot of stuff, but uh, let's see how we, far we go if we need to hold that thing. So, yeah, so you can see we now have our class and we have ReLU, and this is what I, I, we showed previously, right? So for each layer, you need to have ReLU, each layer, you know, including linearity. But also we can use NN sequential. Remember, NN sequential, you have your this stuff, you have your ReLU, you have your stuff, ReLU, and finally model, and we can run this. So you can see this is still the same thing with this guy. Uh, with this guy, it's still the same thing, right? So here we are uh, this defining everything. Now, finally, um, we can, come and do the training. But yeah, so a rule of thumb, where should I put the nonlinear activation function when constructing neural network? A rule of thumb is to put them in between hidden layers and just after the output layer. 
so you can see them. Um, so in between the hidden layers, you need to put them, input the hidden layers, input the hidden layer, you need to put them. And just after the output layers, remember also the output layer, we had in the output layer, we have um, activation function where it changes those stuff to from logic to that. So this is something that you should know. So now we need to train our model. Finally, um, this is the same step we did, um, you know, uh, to forward pass, calculate the loss, um, you know, optimize grade, loss backward, evaluation step and this. And when we run this guy, um, we can see um, our accuracy is 0 0.798. You know, our accuracy is 0 0.798. Oh, loss, loss. Oh no, our loss is 0 0.798. This is, uh, this is not good again. Let me, oh, I did run something. Um, okay, what the model here we are calling? Model three, okay, model three. Input features, output, okay. Right, so let's run it again. Okay, 0 0.5. Accuracy 50% is still probability. Mm. Okay, let's look at it. Okay, so let's make prediction and inference. And let me float this guy. So we can see here what is doing. Um, this is the trend data, right? This is the test data. Mm. Okay, so we can see this is um, doing not something good, right? Um, now, how can we make this thing better? That's the next question. Okay, so let me see something like this. Um, we're using, let me turn this to Tutana. We still have accuracy. The previous one, how many, how much accuracy do we have? I think it's almost similar. Almost similar, right? Yes. It shouldn't be this. Let's go back. Ah. This is yeah, this one is to one. Eh? This one is fifty one. Yeah, but the loss is zero point six nine two. Okay, loss. The loss is 0 0.6 and I can see the loss is 0 0.6 and you know I can see this. Um okay, so the loss is this. So let's go back. Wait. Okay, let me just give it like this. Okay, um, oh, yes. Can we see something? Yes. What can we see here? I could see ninety nine. Yes, yeah, so I, I don't know what happened before. I didn't run something. Maybe I didn't run this guy. Oh, I didn't run maybe this one. It which was using yeah. the the previous um optimizer we have. I, I I was not using this. I I didn't run this one. So it was using the uh, previous optimizer. Yeah. So we can see here now the accuracy increase ninety nine point eight and the loss is zero point zero. You can see it's very minimal, right? And the loss is also the test accuracy is ninety nine, right? So what happens is uh, by introducing this nonlinearity, it makes the network to learn complex stuff. Uh, when you remove this nonlinearity, it allow um, you may not be able to learn a lot of things. Um, you can learn, uh, you know, uh, linear functions. Um, yes. Yeah, so when we run this guy, okay, let's make this prediction on test data and uh, let's look at it. 
Yes, yeah, so look, look, let's look at it. So we can see this is what it's doing. But we can see the prediction is um, nice, but not perfect, right? Uh, because this is not good. Um, potentially, you can do a few other things to improve the performance of this model. Um, so the challenge, can we improve this model to achieve um, another accuracy um, better than this one? Okay, let's look at in the test data. Oh, the accuracy in the test data is telling us it's 99.5. Oh. oh, no, no, maybe this one is uh, the book, but here we have a data accuracy, which is uh, 98. Um, this is not uh, correct. Um, yeah. In the network, they have, um, you know, this accuracy, but our own is still bad beta. Anyway, so that's, um, we can see it can still do good, but we can improve it. Um, any question? Any question? My question? Okay, so here we can see what we did is this clear, you know, binary classification where we were able to classify um, you know things into different one um, and we have seen a lot of stuff for example non-linearity and any other thing um, let's look at you know how we can use um, putting it all together um, let's see how we can use multi class class classification uh, look at yourself. can we stop here or we continue here next week Okay, yeah, I think much in the huh? ah, I think book. we can. Ah, I, th uh, I think. Oh, I think we can. Yeah, there are a lot. There are a lot to discuss. I think we can stop here and discuss next week. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Um. All I can say, like, please go. You can go through the notebook and you know understand more better. Um, if there is a question, you can ask in the channel. Yep. So I think yeah. we can stop. Yeah. Thank you very much. Any question? Okay. So uh, I think Doctor, before yes. before we yes. move, uh, what I yes. like for the sequential, all mm -hmm. these steps we are using now. Mm -hmm. We use sequential in such a way that we minimize those steps, these steps. Uh yes, why not? So which step am I? Um, are you talking about uh, this one? Yeah. Um, to minimize it, to have this sequential. Yeah, so that we can use we can use sequential much. Yes, of course. You can not you can feel like not using this one and use because sequential is even more elegant to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is. Yeah, but as I said, um, you know, in some cases, um, uh, as they said, like sequential allows you, um, uh, the other one and the classes where you, this one allow you to do some complex other stuff that uh, okay. more than the sequential. But at, at this point in uh, time- Simple work, you can just use sequential. Yes, 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 yes. Just use sequential is even better, right? Um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, you start from small and you scale if you, there is the need to do the other one, you can do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so thank you very much, Doug. Yes. Um. Any question? Doctor. Yes. Your visualization. Uh, yes. Go on. Okay. It's down. Uh, it's down. Yes. Yes. The here. Here. I can see that for the train we have this kind of. Um, it looks like the model is linear. Oh, the other one I see. Uh. I see different thing in the other visualization where we have in something like a linear for the train and we have a circular for the test. Ah. I think it's down. Yes, here. Yes, here. Can you shed more light? Yeah. Okay. So here we have our model here, which we train, right? And uh, hey, look at this model, it's going 100%. <laughs> oh, 
on train, but on Tesla and back. Okay, so let's look at which model is this model three, uh, model three, right? Uh, model three, make prediction, model three. Okay, I'll pray. Okay, so on training data, what are we plotting? Um, model one, this is the model one that we show previously that don't do good. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. This is model three, the model that we train that is doing your good things. Can you see yeah. that? Yes, yes. Understood. But is the title that's confusing? Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. So I don't know. The issue is the plot, the function plot decision boundary is doing yeah. the, is automatically if you check the code, is the one that is putting this one, right? So yeah, you can see model one, no 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 non-linearity model three has has non-linearity so you can see this why this is learning and this one is not learning because here we don't we didn't have that linear non-linearity function in it but there's a plot title that is given yes exactly yes exactly yeah, right. yeah. Is the title the said trend the and other yes, yes yes exactly. apart from the title the data set it use is y test yeah, that's why here you can see for training, X train, Y train. Um, he used the training to, uh, data to plot this one and he used the, um, you know, so let's it see. Is, here. Yeah, um, because here, the reason why here, if we use Y test and X test um, in this one, it will use the latest Y test. Do you understand? So we'll not do this because we, because here already we have X train and Y train, which are not predicted, but the, okay, let me show this. Let's use this. No. So look at it. Still, we use um Y test and X test and Y test. So the data is still um we the previous one you are evaluating on training data, and uh, here we just change it to text data. But it's still you can see it's doing uh, not doing good. So it's not like the data, but the the model that is uh, the model. You know, Yes. So I think um, we start to see an interesting concept in the Python, right? Yes. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. So um, I think in the few um, by um, few um, the next one we see another one. Then we will be like uh, you know. So as I was saying, like you see, um, this Python training step is uh, that is what you be doing in Python. This single training step. Just have it in your mind. Just learn it. Um, it's, it, it just like um, you know, updating it, changing some stuff. But this is the ground through that you'll be doing for PyTorch training. Yes, it's just um, we need to update it in some ways to change for different kind of uh, task. All right. So I think um, you know, we are good now. Um, we can um, you know, um, meet next week and continue. Okay, um, no question, Ko. So if there's no question, I think I can stop the recording and uh, inshallah, we'll see you next week. Hallelujah, okay, because we'll come back to meet you now. Hey, what did you say? What did you say? What did you say? Yeah, what did you say? Okay, Allah, thank you. Allah, I tell you. Amen, amen. So, peace and we'll see inshallah next week. Ko, 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 Ah, Eh? I to be sala ah ba wai yake maka shan giya ba Allah ke maka mana nan dai a yawa nan nan Allah ke maka mana to 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 be sala we see next week inshallah ba da ka ungode